How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Today I want to walk you through how to install your own solar array on your home. Now this one's roof mounted as you can see, but it's also grid tied and it will completely offset my monthly power bill. The beautiful thing about this install is because I was willing to take it on as a DIY project, I was able to dramatically lower the cost to get the system in place and producing power for my home. So I'll jump into the full installation so you can see each part of this process, but also show you my overall timeline. How long did it take? How much did it actually cost and what did I save taking this on myself? And is this right for you? What things do you need to consider? So let's jump into it. Okay, so now I have everything lined out here. The blue are my rails and each mark shows my actual anchor locations. This is eight total panels in landscape here, two rows of three, and then the third row of two. This connects up then back here on the west side, so that's a southern facing roof. And then on the west side, I'm gonna have an additional four panels back here. And then those will tie together for the 4.8 kilowatts of overall output. Now, if you're already kind of completely overwhelmed, not knowing what size you need, where would you even put the rails, which side of your roof, where shading at in the summer versus winter, there are a lot of factors and there are companies out there that can help. Specifically, I went with Project Solar on this project, and overall it's been a smooth process and a ton of help. They helped me design the system, procure the hardware, get the engineering prints, submit for permits, and work with the utility. So a ton of things that I didn't have to go through for the first time. I'll tell you more about them later on, but just know you don't have to do this all by yourself. And if you're interested, there's a link in the description, and there's also a promo code ES2024, which will waive the $100 deposit so you can get started right away. Now I'll be using the Iron Ridge Flash Foot 2, which is an awesome system. It gives you your flashing to give you that water resistance. You have your large lag bolt, and that's what's gonna go through. We need to make sure this is not just going in the decking, that it's actually securing to your truss or your rafter, giving it the strength we need. Once that's attached, then you just put that foot on there and it can either be in the vertical direction or horizontal, depending on your design. So I continue on here and this is going to be the end points for the six rails on the southern facing roof. And that's going to have eight panels in the larger of the two arrays. Now the Iron Ridge rails will come in 14 foot sections and then I'll loosely hand tighten the mounting bolts on each of the anchor locations. Now I align this first railing 36 inches away from the side of the shingles and then I start to tighten everything up. So now we're getting into the wiring portion of the project and specifically I'll be using micro inverters. You might be using string inverters where you'd string together all your panels and then come into a string inverter. But for this case, we're doing the very popular Enphase IQ8 Plus micro inverters. And these would fit panels from 235 watts to 440 watts. So a large range of applications would use this micro inverter. And then I'll use this easy solar junction box. I'll mark it off here on the shingles so I can take the lid and cut out after lifting up the second course of shingles with this flat bar. Just take your razor blade, cut it out, and then we'll drill a hole with a spade bit down through the decking and then a slightly smaller hole through the interior of the junction box. Once it's good, then you'll use that Henry's roofing caulk to seal where the pre-line is, so it shows you exactly where to put the sealant. And we'll have four internal mounting screws that will hold this to the wood decking. So that's pretty much it. And I'll keep all the screws for the lid in there and just put one in to hold it. Now moving on to our grounding. So I'll put a grounding lug on one of the two rails. So I have three different sets of PV panels. So I'll have three lugs that I'll connect up here. That's bonding this whole array together. And then we'll bring that six gauge bare copper ground into the smaller gland connector here. And then we'll just land that into the grounding bus bar at the top. So we'll just land that. And then with a the flathead screwdriver, tighten everything up. Kind of hard to get this wrong with these kind of pre-made connectors, but make sure both the tabs clip in and then you'll just count out the rest of your connectors, make a cut so you can pull that wire underneath and then place it into that junction box. Then I go through with zip ties and just start securing everything, cleaning it up, and then I'll go back through once I'm all done and start clipping off the loose ends. All right, so now we're up in the attic and we're gonna bring our arrays together. So I have this first one, this is the larger array, the six panel. I've already dropped 
10-2 Romex down from the junction box on the roof. And then I'm gonna pull that over to this four by four junction box. That's gonna bring my two 10-2 Romex pieces together. One 10-2 Romex coming here, a shorter run, and then I need to go to the other side and then pull 10-2 Romex through the attic, bring those together, and then we'll drop PVC conduit out through the soffit and then that's when we're gonna connect up with our combiner box and then also our disconnect on the outside before feeding back through to the panel. And then we'll go ahead and button up our wiring here at that easy solar junction box, taking the ground, putting it into the bus bar, matching our stranded conductors coming from the N-phase microinverters to the solid coming from the 10-2 Romex. We'll mark that white conductor with some red tape indicating it's a hot conductor and then use a WAGO 221-613 to wire it up. So we got quite a bit more wiring to do, but let's talk about timeline. For me, I went to Project Solar, just like you guys can do down in the description with that link. I went over to the DIY install and I went through my system and deposited my $100. Now you guys won't have to deposit $100 if you use our promo code ES2024, but that started my process and that was on April 27th. Now going through multiple different steps in there with site assessments, starting to design our system, submitting our permits, working with the utility, many different steps in there that your project manager can help with. We Fast forward today, which is on July 23rd, and I am now past inspection. So everything's done. I've done my full inspection within three months. Now I still need to be approved by the utility. I do expect that to take two weeks. So you can say three and a half months from literally submitting the first thing to Project Solar to getting commissioned and approved by the utility and starting to actually produce power for my home. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Is that more time or less time than you expected? For me, that's actually a pretty quick timeline from what I've seen and just keep that in mind. I know for my state of Illinois, we have the clock is ticking with our utility and in a few months, we're gonna lose the one-to-one -one net metering, which is a critical part of these projects. So just keep that type of timeline in mind, just in case you have a deadline coming up to make sure you're not missing out on any savings. Now I'll go ahead and drill from the panel out with this long drill bit so I can locate exactly where that's gonna come out. When I know that, then I can go ahead and use a hole saw and get that PVC adapter installed there, which I'm gluing up now, which attached to my body that goes into the main disconnect. But now I need to drill that hole and start to get the PVC pipe up into the attic through the soffit. Now I'm gonna take some one by threes and actually connect those to three studs, putting three total boards in there. And that's gonna give me a screwing surface for the disconnect and also the end phase envoy, the combiner box. And then once everything fits up, I go ahead and go back through and glue everything and get it finally in place with my last connection here. Now I have that sweeping 90 and complete our install, and now we're ready to pull wire. We'll have three 10 gauge THHN wire will pull through this three quarter inch PVC. So I got those three wires taped off and I have it started so it's actually past the bushing and at least we're past that resistance. Now going back out, I'm gonna bring that 20 amp 240 breaker I only have one of those, and this unit could take up to four 20 amp breakers, so we're not even coming close to scratching the capability of this end phase system. But we'll land our two hot conductors after doing our ground first. It's best practice to always land your grounds first when you're wiring stuff up. But first, before bringing together the disconnect, I wanna run my current clamps. These monitor the load, the overall amount of power coming into your home, and then it helps the end phase envoy know what am I producing from a PV perspective. There's a small black circle on the left-hand side of the envoy. You'll see I passed one conductor through that. So that monitors how much PV power are we creating. And then this will monitor how much are we actually consuming. So you'll get a full picture of your home. So you'll land those in the small little screw terminals on the upper right-hand corner. So we'll have four wires that we need to land. These are much, much smaller wires and you'll need a much smaller flathead screwdriver to land these because really these are just sensor wires. They're not taking any load. So once we have those landed, now let's go ahead and work on our disconnect. Now this is a 30 amp disconnect, it is non-fused. We will not have fuses in there. There's just blades that either complete the circuit or open the circuit. So now we have the L1, L2 going in the envoy. 
and then we'll land our ground first on that bus bar that I installed. Remember, don't forget that part. Make sure you have the box grounded. And just passing through those three conductors from the panel, and then I will bring those into the disconnect. Landing ground first, and then we'll complete those two other hot conductors. And I do flip this disconnect to the off position, just so I have everything off as we go back and complete our circuits to our panel. Now inside the panel, I will go ahead and bring the ground in. And once that's in place, I'll connect my 20 amp, 240 volt breaker all the way at the end. You want it as far away from the main disconnect as possible. And then land your two conductors. And then you can go ahead and put on your cover. So we'll start off with that first one, just confirming that we're open on our fire lanes. 36 inches to the ridge, 36 inches to the outside of that roof. And then once we get that and everything's lined up, then you can start securing it down. And it'll take you a little bit of time to get used to how exactly to tie off those wires, keeping them off the deck. You wanna keep them off the asphalt shingles as much as possible. But when you plug it in, you should see that flashing light on each of those microinverters, indicating that it's at least getting power. And then we can do some additional commissioning and validation later on once everything's plugged in. So now we're moving to the west side. Only four panels here. I did need to move uh, my ground wire on the rails to make sure it was tucked underneath those two last panels that I'm putting in right now. And then we'll finish off the total of 12 panels here and secure everything up. So what about the cost? For this 4.8 kilowatt system, roof mounted and grid tied, I paid 10,500. Now that was mostly to Project Solar that provided the vast majority of everything that I needed dropped off on a single pallet to my home. But I did get some additional supplies, which you'll see that list down in the description. Now taking into account, I will get a 30% tax credit. That puts me around $7,350 that I'll be invested in this system. So that would put me at about eight to nine years on the worst case scenario. If I get renewable energy credits, which are in the state of Illinois, we do get renewable energy credits, that would put me more in the four to five year range, which obviously is much, much better and usually kind of best in class for getting solar on your home. Per kilowatt, I was at $2.20. I think you can do a little bit better, especially if your system is larger. Remember the end phase envoy, I'm only using one of four slots, but I have to burden that whole cost. So it's not very efficient from that standpoint. So if I did an eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 kilowatt system, my dollars per watt would go down substantially for this DIY system. So let me know what you guys think or if you have any questions down in the comments. Always love to get your feedback. Now, if you need more detail on this installation, we got you covered. Over on Everyday Solar, you can check out this video right here. It's much longer and goes into much more detail on each of those parts if you're gonna take on this project. And remember that link in the description would take you over to Project Solar, which is exactly who we use for this overall setup. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.